The buffer is a digital symbol that passes the values of its inputs to its outputs once an enable line goes high. There are several ways to get a buffer into your program, the first of which is to click the logic folder under the program view, type in the speed key buffer, and hit enter. This puts a buffer symbol under your logic folder. Alternatively, you could expand the conditional folder under logic symbols and click and drag the buffer over to the detail view. The buffer has an expandable number of inputs. Now the buffer is unique because each input is mapped to its own output, so input 1 is mapped to output 1, input 2 is mapped to output 2, and so on. But what's interesting about it is this enable line at the top of the symbol. And what this does is it would allow, say, output 9 to take on the value of input 9 whenever the enable line is pulsed or goes high. Let's make a quick example program and we'll bring these points home. First off, I'm going to delete some of the unused inputs that I have on the buffer. I'm going to leave it at 3. I'm going to use the toggle to drive the enable line. And I'm also going to use three separate toggles to drive each of the inputs. The inputs of the toggles will be driven by the X panel. I'm going to feed the inputs of the enable line and the inputs back to the X panel so we can see what their states are while we're using them. And then I'll take the outputs of the toggles and tie them into the buffer. And then I'll take the outputs of the buffer and bring them back to the X panel. And now that the program is complete, let's compile and upload to our processor. Now that the program is uploaded and running, let's take a look at how the buffer works. You'll recall that this enable button was tied to the enable line on the buffer, and then each of these triggers are tied to toggles, which in turn tie to the inputs of the buffer, and what we see here are the outputs of the buffer. So right now with the enable line off, if we enable any of these triggers, we notice that the outputs stay off. But once we enable this enable line, we notice that the outputs of the buffer take on all of the symbols of the triggers. And then once we turn the enable line off, we notice that the outputs of the buffer automatically will go back to off. Now when is it good to use a buffer? Well, let's imagine that the project that you're working on involves two Blu-ray players, and you want to use the same buttons on the X panel to control both Blu-ray players, but you don't want to control them both at the same time. You could have your page logic set up so that when one Blu-ray player is selected, the button presses for play, pause, stop, rewind, go to the first Blu-ray player, and then when the second Blu-ray player is selected, the play, pause, stop, rewind buttons only get forwarded onto that second Blu-ray player.